Beautiful job, beautiful job. To God be, be the glory for that, for that worship and for that confirmation. Thank you at home for participating with us. Um, I also want to read some scripture with you, and then we'll go to, 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 the, to God in prayer. Now, I'm going to read some very, very familiar scripture. Matter of fact, God has shown me so much in this parable about shallow living, about going, you know, we talk about going deep. God has shown me so much in this parable that he uses about shallow living that you will see Mark 4, 1, you know, you know, 1 through, I think it's 20 some verses. You will see different parts of it throughout the series. I, I just couldn't preach it all today. I would have. I thought I could have got it underneath my time period. I would have, but I can't. It's just too rich. And, and God began to set on me pretty heavy about addressing this 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 bad root thing and so I'm going to just stay there I'm going to be a little bit out of order than what the verses are are listed but I'm going to I'm going to stay what God kind of began to speak to my heart last week on and so what I want to do is I want to read this and just just give you a little context this is a familiar if you've been around this ministry you've seen these verses before in Mark or either in Matthew or when I've talked about them this is Jesus I want you to kind of get this you know we talk about this whole going deep thing this is what happens before Jesus tells them to go deep Come on, come on out, let's go deep, let's cast the net out deep. So this is, what is, this, this is where the series really kind of like starts. And what Jesus is doing, he's on the shore, and he's beginning to, to teach uh, uh, these parables to the people. He's teaching the people about, about God and about his word and about how to grow and about things that are inhibiting them from growing. That's what, really what he's talking about in this parable. And, and so I want, I'm going to read through this parable, then we'll jump down into it in the sermon. He says, Again, Yeshua began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large. Imagine that, a large crowd. When, can, I can't wait till we can go. You know, we take some things for granted. I cannot wait till we can go and be a part of a safe, large crowd again. He says it was so large that he got into the boat and he sat in it out on the lake while the people were along the shore at the water's edge. So you got to see this. Jesus is crowd is so big, he needs to get a little bit away from the, he needs to do a little bit of social distancing, to God be the glory. He needs to get a little bit away, and so he gets on the boat, and he, he goes out just a little bit, he sits on the boat, and he begins to, to teach on the boat, okay? He says, he taught them many things by parables, and his teaching said, listen, well, I'm sorry, he taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, listen, now listen to me today, guys. I want you to, to really listen today. This sermon, what well, we're going to talk about today, these words that we're going to look at today, they have the ability and capability to change your life like never before. Matter of fact, I'm going to purposely try my best to stay as practical, even kill as I can throughout this because I don't want anything to distract from your life. You, you need to understand this. Let, let me give you just a little bit more of context. The reason why Jesus is using the parables here is, is not for the stuff that we've been taught. His word says, if you go back and read Mark chapter 4, Jesus tells the disciples, the reason why I gave it to them in parables was so that some of the people who whose hearts weren't in the right places wouldn't understand. They think I was just talking about a guy throwing seeds, and they think I was just giving them advice about how to be a good farmer. And, and, and the, for the people who really were with me, who really understood those people that God was really working in their lives, this parable would be life-changing. But for those other people whose hearts were not in the right place, this parable would just be time. It, it, for some of us in this room, it's no different. It's just going to be time for some of you. But, but there's an opportunity for those of us who can get our hearts in the right place to receive something from God today that will, will change your life. Look, look what he says. He says, listen. Got to start by listening. Got to start by paying attention. And he begins to give this parable. He says, 
a farmer went out to sow his seed. His farmer, imagine this farmer with his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and they ate it up. As soon as he threw the seed out, birds came and they ate it up. He says, some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. You know we're coming back and getting this one. Because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, didn't have enough root, guys. The plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. He says the other seed, look what it did. It fell among thorns, fell among the weeds, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. They couldn't be productive. They couldn't be fruitful. Put a pin in that verse. That, that's what we're going to be spending our time at today. He says, still others fell on good soil. It came up, it grew, and it produced a crop, some uh, multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Yeshua said, he said this again, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Father God, we come to you now in the name of your son, Yeshua, the Christ God. We come praying and we're asking you today, God, we come knocking at your door. Give us ears so that we may hear, God. Remove any distractions. I know some of us are in our homes. Some of us are on Facebook watching this. And there'll be other things pinging in and other things happening. God, I'm praying right now that you give us ears so that we can listen, hearts so that we can receive, and give us an opportunity that our lives may be changed so that as we move out of this air, this place, this this, this time, God, in which we're, we're at home and things are, are not necessarily growing, that when we move into this next season, which you have for us, we're able to take full advantage of this next season. God, we want to go deeper. We want to understand how we can make change in our life, transformation in our life, God. We, we don't want to go back to the way it used to be. No, we don't, God. We're looking to go to a place that's better than what we came from before this before this pandemic. And so, God, clear a space in our hearts where we can receive this word. Give us the ability, God, to take this word and make it practical in our lives. This is our prayer. And we pray it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To God be the glory. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 As I mentioned earlier, uh, the guys, the ladies, we've all been working around the yard. And we've been doing a lot of outside work. Me and Juan um, uh, have been here just about every day this week doing outside work. Because what happens is, you know, we had this place in really good shape before the, before the summer, before the spring came around. In the last fall, in the last winter, I mean, we had this place in really good shape. We had gone through the process of killing all the weeds. We walked around, we sprayed Roundup or, or, or you know, in our case, the off-brand version of it, whatever that is, the, the cheaper version of it. But we sprayed that stuff everywhere, and pretty much everything in the beds was dead. Everything in places where we didn't want things to grow was not growing. We did a really good job of getting this place winterized, getting it ready for the end of the season. We came in last year, it was overgrown, there was weeds everywhere. And we went through a process, man, we cut down trees, we cut down some weeds that had became trees. They had become so big on the property. And we just went through and we cleaned off every area that you could think of. And, and, and then we come back. Now, we, we, we haven't been, been here a lot because of COVID. And so a few weeks into the spring, we, we're not here doing anything. And all of a sudden, it's like somebody turned the light switch on. And we've got all these, these weeds. This is, this is poke salad. Believe it or not, some people eat this, but this is just a common weed. They just, they just grow up. It's amazing to me how easy and how quickly these weeds just kind of take over. You know, you come here one week, literally, and there's nothing out there. There's nothing at all uh, out there, nothing at all. And then we come back just days later, and this stuff's grown up. And if you wait a week from now, this stuff will be as tall as a kid. And if you wait another week, this stuff will be as tall as, a, as, as an adult. I mean, it's amazing how fast this stuff grows up. And, and I'm sitting there thinking as me and Juan are out there literally on our hands with my knife, 
because some of it had gotten so thick within the beds that we had to pull out my knife, and it wasn't the right tool. Trust me. We're just cutting it off at the, at the ground. We can't go under there and get, get this root out because the problem is not that, got to get this, not that we didn't do a good job of, of, of killing this stuff last year. I think we did a great job of killing it, even with the cheaper killer that we used. It killed it dead. I'm talking about we sprayed it. It was nothing. It went, it turned brown, and then it just went away. I, it, it worked. I, it worked. But th the problem is because we didn't go and pull out the root, Be because all we did was we killed it first. This is what we did last year. We killed everything first. We, we sprayed stuff on it to kill it. And then we took some device. We took a weed eater. We took, you know, a, 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 a sling blade or whatever it is that we went out there and we used. And we used that to, to knock everything off the surface. And then we grabbed up all the surface stuff, all the dead stuff that we thought was dead. And we looked at it, and it was all gone. All we saw was mulch. We didn't see any weeds. All we saw was the plants that we wanted to see and mulch. And we thought to ourselves, hey, man, we've done this. We've taken care of this. But the reality of it is, as soon as spring came back around, and, and you got to get this because I never saw this before. I'm, I'm, we're about to get into this word in just a second. As soon as spring came back around, the root, this bottom part, the root, it began to come back alive, and it began to grow again. And although we had cleared the surface, although we had killed what we thought we had killed, we didn't kill it. We just caused it to go dormant. Because we didn't go in and remove the root, that same thing, this same weed, this same thing that was above the surface before is still under the surface now. And all it needs is the right conditions in order for it to pop back up just like it did in the past. You know that thing, it was, listen, it, was, it had popped up and it had grown strong and it was obvious and so we had to take care of it. We had, to, we had to kill it. We had to cut it down. We had to spray the roundup on it because it was a real issue for us. It looked bad. It made the church look bad. It made us look bad. So we had to spray it. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody, you're not listening to me, though. You, you're not hearing. I'm talking to you in a parable right now. You're not hearing me. I'm, I, I think somebody's having trouble hearing me right now. I want you to hear me. It had gotten so big and so bad that you had to do something about it. You had to make a change. You know, if you didn't change this, you're going to get fired. If you didn't change this thing, you're going to get a divorce. If you ain't changed this thing, your kids weren't going to ever speak to you again. If you ain't changed this thing, you was going to lose your mind. You had to do something with it because it got so big and it was such a problem and it was so ugly. So this is what you did. You sprayed something on it to kill it, and then you cut it down. And you removed it, you took it off somewhere, but you didn't take care of the root. And all it needs is the right conditions. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. I want to talk with you about removing the bad roots in your life. See, just like those islands out there, in our lives, many of us are dealing with bad roots. We have stuff underneath the surface. We've gone through our entire life. You know, every so often we go through that, we cut off this junk, we cut out this mess. We do something on the surface level. We make it look good. We make it look like we've got things in order, like we've actually fixed the problem. But the reality of it is, underneath the surface of our life, underneath the surface in our relationship, underneath the surface in our behavior, underneath the surface in our, in our attitude is a root that is just waiting on, it's just waiting on the, the right opportunity to come back up again. And as we begin to get into to, to this word in Mark, and I, I got to show you something because I had, I had this revelation. I had this thing, this rhema to jump off of this word. He says, now, now this, is what, this is what Jesus is saying. They come to Jesus and they say, hey, what were you talking about? What, you, you, you told this, these parables. What was that all about? And Jesus is saying, you, you don't understand? Let, let me break it down for you. And first he tells them, the reason why I told you the parable is so that you can understand it and some of the other people wouldn't be able to understand it. And then he says, now let me explain it. And the only one I want to look at today is this one that addresses the weeds. I want to look at the one that's addressing the weeds because I'm believing in our hearts that the, one of the reasons why we remain to be shallow, shallow people, shallow in our worship, shallow in the things that we do, shallow in the decisions that we make is because of the weeds, the, 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 the roots, the bad roots that we have underneath the surface in our lives. And every time we get ready to do something about it or every time we get ready to do something great, that bad root shows up. And what that bad root does is it messes up every good thing that you have going on. And, and you know, if you just think about it for a second, 
When things get good in your life, you show up. Oh, that hurt. I know that, 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 that was kind of like a low blow. When things get good in your life, when God really begins to moving some things in your life, all of a sudden, these things, they just start to pop up. And this is, this is the revelation. This is the thing I had never saw before. Because if you think about this parable, what, he, what Jesus is talking about, never saw this before in my life, is when we're moving into a good season in our life, there's an opportunity for these things to reach up and choke the good season. See, by him using this parable and by him using the fact that you got this sword, what he's talking about, this is a time of growth. Because nobody's going to be sowing seeds in the winter time of your life. Nobody's going to be walking around trying to sow seeds when things are necessarily hard in your life. The, the, the time in which people begin to sow seeds, is when the growth is coming, when, when God is getting ready to do something amazing in your life, when things are getting ready to come forth in your life like never before. And that is the point. Those are the conditions in which your, your, your issues, your, your bad roots start to show up. So, so, so you get the promotion, right? But, but, and everything is great for a period of time. And then all of a sudden, that root of, of not trusting others, that root of negativity, that root that thinks that it's going to fall apart, that root that believes that, that people don't like you, that root that believes that folk are talking about you, that root that makes you begin to doubt what God did can do in your life, that root begins to grow in that soil. It begins to grow in that good condition. And before you know it, a, a, a little bit of the leaf pops out, and people at work start to say, okay, now, who is, who is this? And, and if we're not careful, this whole stalk comes out and this tree begins to grow. And this thing gets to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And before you know it, you're in a situation inside of your relationship. I'm talking to, I'm talking to, to married folk. You know, we, we say, listen, we talk, I'm talking to relationships in general, married, single, whatever the case may be. I'm talking to sibling relationships. You make a decision that you're going to, you see this thing, you see this weed that has grown up in the middle of this relationship. And now you've applied whatever it is. You've applied something to it to get rid of it. You've cut it down, moved it out. Now you guys are moving into another place in your life. Now God begins to bless that relationship in another way, a way like never before. And all of a sudden, here come those bad roots that you never got rid of, those bad roots that you never ripped out, those bad things. And this is what Jesus says. They're coming to choke out the good thing that God is doing for you. Look what he says here. He says, now these are the ones, talking about the seed that's thrown on the good ground in the middle of the good time. He says, these are the ones that are sown among weeds, sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. You hear it. You hear it every week. You online, you taking notes. You hear the word. This is what he says. These are the ones that hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word of God, choke it out, and it becomes unfruitful. And, and what, he, what he's saying, this is what Jesus is saying. He says, you get to this place where God begins to bless you. You begin to hear his word. You begin to see things manifesting inside of your life. You begin to see things manifesting inside of the relationships that you're in. You begin to see things manifesting at the job, wherever it is that you have uh, believe God's word for. You begin to see the manifestation. It's a good time for growth, but, but here's, the, here's the unfortunate thing about it being a good time for growth. It's also a good time for weed, for, for weeds to grow and for bad roots to grow and for stuff to pop up that will, this is what Jesus says, literally choke out the blessing that God has for you. Look what he says. He says that these things that pop up, it's the cares of this world. It's your fear. That's what he's saying. You get to this place. God is blessing you. He's taking you to this new season in your life. And you know what's limiting you from going to that new season? Your fear, your worry, your concern. Should I invest? Should I go? Should I do? It's the fear and the worry that begins to choke out the season that God has for you. It's your anger. He begins to try to do this. He's talking about this thing, the cares of this world. You begin to get angry with things that are happening in this world, and you begin to, to shut off and shut out people and, and begin to put up walls. He, he says not only is it the cares of this world, you're worrying about how people think about you. You're worrying about having the approval of people. You're thinking about what people are saying about you. He says that these things, they grow up, they begin to choke out the good thing that God is doing for you. Not only is it the cares of these worlds, he says that you get to running out the money. 
You, you, you go into this good place, and instead of you being a good steward of what God is doing for you in this good place, God pay. This is what happens. You know, you, you have a debt issue. You get your, you get your stimulus check. You get your, 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 uh, your, some insurance claim. You get some money in your pocket. You go in. You, you cut off this thing. You, you spray it. You cut it off. You remove it. But underneath the surface is still a financial issue you have not dealt with. And so now your credit score is up and everything. This is what, this is what Jesus is saying. Now your credit score is up and, and the word of God is manifesting inside of your house, inside of your life, inside of your relationship. And now all of a sudden you want to go out. You got to buy some stuff. You got to get some stuff. You gotta, now you got to be able to see it. It's not good enough that God is manifesting in your life. You need to see it with an emblem on the front of the car. You need to see it with a certain kind of liquor to drink. You need to see it. I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just saying what I'm, just saying what I'm saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying. You know, that old bottle, the plastic bottle was fine. The box was fine. And now you move into the new season, and all of a sudden, the deceitfulness of riches, you begin to spend like you used to spend. You begin to spend time more at work than you do in the place that got you to this place. You begin to value things other than God over God. He says, not only do you get in this place where these roots, these bad roots that, that are deceive you, make you think about money all the time, you get to this place where the desires for other things, you just want something that it ain't God. You just, you just get to this place. I'm talking about in the good place where God has you. You just completely forget about God. And you just start thinking about others. And now all of a sudden, God is blessing you. God is taking care of you. But now you can't, you, you're not happy. You can't smile. You, you're always upset. You can't sleep at night. You don't even understand why. Everything's right at the job. Everything's going well within the relationship. Things, God has things right where it needs to be. But your desire for, for more, your, your desire to be liked, your desire to get more likes, whatever the case may be, that root that's underneath the surface, that bad root in the midst of the good, it starts to grow up, and it chokes out all that God is doing to you. And you have folk, you know, if I'm talking to you, you know exactly what I'm talking to you because you have folk constantly telling you all the good things about you. You have folk constantly saying how God is blessing you and constantly pointing at God's blessings in your life, but yet and still you can't see them because you want other things. You got this root growing underneath the surface, and it's popping through right now, and it's starting to get stronger, and it's starting to grow. And this is what Jesus says. It literally chokes out the Word of God, and it makes you unfruitful. You can't even, you can't even enjoy. You can't be fruitful. You know, you used to have an ease to what you do. Now, all of a sudden, it's so hard to do your job. You used to have an ease to what you, what you say, the relationships that you have. Uh, now, all of a sudden, it's so hard to get a relationship. It's so hard to, to get things right within the relationship. And what Jesus is saying is because we don't remove the bad roots in our life, because we allow for the bad roots to be there, when the good time comes, these things begin to grow with all the other stuff that's in there, and this is, the, this is what happens. They end up choking out the good stuff instead, instead of your good stuff choking out your bad stuff. What he says in the Word is your bad stuff, your bad roots, they choke out the good roots. So you're in a relationship with somebody, and all this good stuff has happened over. You guys have gotten to a, a place in, in, in your sibling relationship. You've gotten to a place in a marital relationship. You've gotten to a place in a work relationship. You feel like a team. Everything feels good. And then all of a sudden, this, this, this thing just starts to pop up, and you say, well, what? I thought that we were good. I thought that we were moving in a positive, in a right direction. I've changed so much of who I am. You've changed so much of who you is. But, but for whatever reason, these, these bad roots... They just start popping up, and they start to choke out everything. And, and here's the issue. This, this is what God told me. He told me two, two important things you need to understand. You need to understand the first thing is th that these, these kind of weeds, this kind of issue, it always going to come during the good time because that's the time in which the soil is good. When the soil is good outside, you know, at the time that we want to grow the good plants, the bad plants start to pop up. That's why it's so important that you get rid of these this roots because you want to be in the good season. You want to be blessed. We want to come out of this, this stay-at-home thing. We want to go back out into our jobs. We want to go back out into society. We want to be able to see each other again. We want to be in the same room with our parents again and with our children again and with our siblings again. We want things to be right again, but this is what you need to understand. While you're praying for things to be right, you need to be prepared to pull out every bad root in your life so that it doesn't come in. This is what Jesus is saying. It doesn't come in and sabotage 
the good thing that God is, is doing for you. And, and, and this is the challenge. The challenge is, for most of us, we think about this like me and one, and like what we thought about it last year. We think about it in terms of spraying some on it, killing it, and then cutting it up. We think about it in terms of we control. We get to this place where we're thinking about it in terms of how we can make the outside look good. And, and, and listen, you got to get this. God never is thinking about the outside of you and what you look like on the outside. God's never giving you, listen, God, none of his word is ever about the way you're supposed to. That's why, that's why churches, have, that's why we've gotten in such a bad, bad name for ourselves. Because we've gotten so much focus on what's going on on the outside. And what it looks like on the outside. And what we're driving. And where we live. We've gotten so focused on the outside. You know what? It's, sometimes it's just good to have some good, something good on the inside. And not, nothing so great on the outside. I, I go back to my grandma's house. I say, man. Listen, there was so much good on the inside of her. I never realized that outside the, the house that she lived in, the, the things that were happening inside of the house where she lived, because she was so good on the inside, because the Spirit of the Lord was so present inside of her house, I never paid attention to the outside. It, it, it could have been a mansion for all I knew because the Spirit of the Lord was so active on the inside of her. The outside didn't mean anything. The house that we lived in, the house that we grew up in, it didn't mean anything because the inside was right, and it wasn't about the outside. And, and this is what, this is what, God begins to, to, to tell Samuel. Sa Samuel's looking for somebody who looks a certain way on the outside. They've got to be a certain. God is sending him to go and get David. He's looking for somebody tall and strong. G God is sending him to go and find this person that, that is the right person for, 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 for the calling. And what Samuel does, he gets caught up. I mean, what, what, what Samuel does, he gets caught up in Saul. And he's looking at the outside. He's looking at how big and how strong this guy is. And this is what God says. He says, look, people look at the outward appearance. People look at trying to spray this thing, kill it, cut it, gather it, and throw it away. He said people are all the time, this is what we're all the time doing, all of us who are living shallow right now, all, that's what this series is about, this series is about going deeper. I'm trying to get you to this place of going deeper. And what God is saying to us today is don't focus on the outside. Don't focus on just trying to make it look good. Don't focus on the fake book, I mean the Facebook, where we just put up what look good all the time. How good is that to anybody? How does that help anybody? All we put up is what looks good, and that is not the reality of our lives. And what we have to do is we have to get to the place where we're willing to go in and not just spray this stuff and not just cut it and hide it and get rid of it for a temporary time, but we have to say to ourselves, we're going to dig out the roots. We're going to get rid of this stuff. We're not going back. It's not going to be there anymore. I'm not going back to the mistake that I made. And what, what God begins to say, you're looking at the outward appearance. You're just focused on spraying this thing, cutting it, and hiding it, and getting rid of it. He says, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the inner man. The Lord looks at the inside. And if you want to make any transformation in your life, if you want to stop being the person that you were, if you're tired of this, you know it's true. If you know it's true that these things, they just kind of grow up inside of your relationships and they just kind of grow up at your jobs and, and they just kind of grow up in the places where you go and they just kind of grow up in your life and they, they block out God's blessing for you and you feel depressed and you feel hurt and you feel bitterness. What he's saying to us today is stop focusing on trying to cut it down and spray it down and controlling the weed, but get to the place where we actually dig it up at the root. Where we actually make a, a, a transformation inside of our heart. Where we actually say, it's not about going back to the thing that we did before. Like, you just say, I am not going to cuss anybody out. You dig into that thing that makes you cuss people out, that thing that makes you angry. You dig into it, and then you just get it out of your system once and for all. You uproot that thing. You give it to God, and you literally, I'm telling you, you can, I, you can do it. You don't have to cuss anybody else out. You don't have to make another bad financial decision. You can be a good, the Bible says, you can be a good steward of your money. God can bless you. God, God can bless you like you would never believe, it, and you can keep it. It won't be just like, you know, tax season, we pay off all the bills, we get everything in order. And by the next year, if the root is still right. underneath the surface, right. we're right back in the same debt. We, we get into this relationship with somebody, and, and things are going well, and then all of a sudden, 
we show up. This root begins to show up. These, these bad roots begin to show up, and they ruin everything. And they make us do stuff that we don't want to do, and we lose control. And we say, you know, this is what we say. This is what my, this is what my kids say. I just blank. And you know what, what I just blank mean? What I just blank mean is that at that particular time, you, cut, you just weren't conscious no more. You just didn't think. I just lost everything. I just lost all consciousness. It just took me over. And the only reason, this is what I want you to understand, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later. The only reason people can press your button is because you have a button. And until you get rid of the button, people are going to always figure out a way to press your button. The issue is not that people are pressing your button. The issue is that you got a button to press. And it's time for you to get to a place where you get rid of the button, where you dig deep, where you get rid of all the roots, all the bad roots, all the things that's choking out the relationships that you're in, all the stuff that's messing things up on your job, all the stuff that's got you depressed, that's got you bitter, that's got you sitting somewhere by yourself. It's time to to get it out once and for all. Now, how are we going to do this? Now, now Pastor Means, is you, I mean, you're dealing with something. You know, my mom and them, we, they used to cuss people out. My, my dad and them, they used to cuss people out. You, my family, you just don't know my family, Pastor Means. We just, you know, you, you cross us, we all show up at the bus stop. You, you, you cross us, and we meet you at the flagpole. You know, we, we've been like this our whole life. This is just who I am. Am. And what I'm telling you is, it's not who you are. No, you're not. You don't have to make bad financial decisions. No, you don't have to have a bad attitude. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be cold to other people. You don't have to say angry things. You don't have to repost stuff that's inappropriate. You don't have to dislike the, the other party. You don't have to dislike the other president. You don't have to dislike the other people. You don't have to dislike the other race. You don't have to dislike people who are different to you. You don't have to make the mistakes that you always make. There's a bad root on the inside of you. That bad root is leading you toward bad decisions. What's happening is what Jesus says. What's happening in your situation is you've not removed the bad root out of your life, and every time you get to a place where things are getting good, every time you get to a place where God is moving, every time, listen, this is what happens, that root begins to grow because roots grow in good condition if they're there. If they're not there, they do not grow. And, and, and so this is what we have to do. This is what, this is what very practical, I want to talk to you very practically. There, there, there's some things that you have to do this time. This is not, listen to me, this is not the sermon where you just go back to doing what you used to do. This is not the time for you to tune out. You know, if you've been out this whole time, this is what I want you to know, that, that you got some, this, if you've been out the whole time, come on back now, this is what I want you to know. You've got some roots on the inside of you that are bad roots. You have an opportunity. I'm about to tell you now, the opportunity that you have to get rid of those roots once and for all. If you've not been with me the whole time, you have an opportunity right now to jump right back on this train. We're about to take out the station one more time. I want you to understand, God, listen, this is what Jesus says. I need you to listen very carefully to these things that I'm about to give you because they will change your life. And the first thing you need to do, you need to get the right tool. You know, me and Juan, me and Deacon Mobley, we were out there, we would kind of had my knife, had my little knife, and we would kind of, you know, some of these things were easy to pull out, and we just pulled them, they came right out. Then some of them, when you pulled them, they were not budging. The root had gotten so deep inside of some of these things that the only thing that we could do with the tool that we had was to just cut them at the surface. Same kind of shallow thing. Just make it look right on the outside. We sprayed it. It's going to be dead for a season. We're going to cut it with my knife at the surface, and then we're going to leave it there until next season. Then we do the same thing, and we'll be doing the same thing for the rest of the time that we have a church here. And that's not the way to go. What we need to do is you need to get the right Two, look what, look what the Word of God says in Hebrews 4. It says, for the Word of God is alive and it is powerful. Doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter how many generations it's been going on. Doesn't matter what you face with. Doesn't matter how you just blink sometimes. All that stuff is that God is more powerful than your attitude. God is more powerful than your issues. God is more powerful than your mistakes. God is more powerful than how somebody hurt you. God is more powerful than molestation. God is more powerful than divorce. God is more powerful than any issues that you ever encounter. God is more powerful than any bad roots that you have. God is more powerful than any addiction. And, and this is all it takes. you got to put down that little knife that you've been using just to keep it cut down at the surface, the little shallow way that you've been getting through so folk won't know that you got a real issue at home. you got a real addiction at home. you addicted and you're walking around. You're going to infect 
respect somebody. You need to get to the place where you get the real tool and you begin to dig around and get that thing out. Look what he says, the Word of God. is. You need to get an alive tool. You need to get a powerful tool. You need to get a sharp tool. The Word of God is sharper than any uh, two-edged sword. He said, listen what it says. It has the ability to cut. It can get underneath that little area that me and Warren couldn't get into and make a difference and get the root out. You need to understand the Word of God. If you really get into the Word of God about your issue, if you get into the Word of God about your root and you just spend time searching the Bible and, and reading God's Word about how to get through your issue, I'm talking about your root, the thing that keeps popping up and ruining everything for you. God doesn't, have, God doesn't want that for you. You know what He wants you to do? He wants you to get the Word on the inside of you in such a way where He can go in with this, saw, with this sharp sword and He can cut out all that hurt. He can cut out all that pain. He can get that root out. It can happen. Look, look what he says. It, 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 not only does it cut between the soul and the spirit, between the joint and the marrow, this is what it does. It exposes the root. He said it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. It, you, it gives you the opportunity to go in that ground. Think about with a shovel or something, a spade, and now you're cutting into the ground. You're moving all that stuff, and now you can see for the first time the root. You can see how big this thing is. You can see how much power, how strong this thing is, deeply rooted on the inside of you. And what the Word of God does is just like a mirror. You begin to read the Word of God, and you begin to see the root that's happening on the inside of you. You begin to dig down into that thing, and you can see how entangled that thing is around your life and how much power that thing has for your life. But you just don't get there, but you get to this place where you begin to read God's Word. And not only does He expose it, but He fixes it. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. When you give this thing to God's word, when you get, I'm talking about not, not, not this thing where you wake up in the morning time and whatever they send you to read, you read, and then you check your box and you say, okay, I read the word today. I read the word. I read the word every morning. My phone, when I get up in the morning, the word of God be waiting on me, and this is what God wanted me to read that day. That was the word. No, 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 no. It's time for you to get into your issues. The person that sent that to you might not have the same issue you got. If you got an issue, you need to search God's word for that issue. You need to pull out that double-edged sword. and You need to start cutting some stuff down and getting down to the root of your issue. He says everything is naked and exposed before God's eyes. And he is, listen, check this out. He is the one to whom we are what? accountable. That, that's part of the problem. The reason why you handling stuff on the surface is because you are accountable to man. And you don't want man to see your attitude. You don't want man to see your issue. You don't want man, you don't want mama them to see your addiction. You don't want, you don't want those people around you. So this is what you do. You control the weed rather than digging up the, the root. Am I right? And, and, and what God wants you to do is he wants you to be accountable to him. Because what God wants you to do is he wants you to get the word of God and he wants you to dig the root out. He doesn't, listen, God is a jealous God. He don't want to share you with some issue, with some addiction, with, with some things you got going on, some attitude that doesn't represent him. What God wants you to do is he wants you, you're accountable to him. He wants you to take his word and he wants you to dig out this, this issue that's, that's on the inside of you. And, and not only do you have to put away that little knife that you've been using, that little weed control thing that you've been using, but, but it's going to require for you to get on your knees. See, me and Mobley, we were standing up pulling stuff out. We were doing a good job of pulling stuff out. But we got to some that required, we would literally had to get down on our knees in order to get this thing out. This thing is so entrenched inside of your life, you got to get down on your knees. And look, look what he says, in, uh, Paul says in the Thessalon to the Thessalonian church, he says, Rejoice always. This is a form of praying. Just rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for your life in Christ Jesus. You got to get this, God. got to get this. There are going to be some things that you are suffering with that's going to require for you to get down on your knees. There's going to be some. There were some weeds out there. Listen, we couldn't just pull them up. We couldn't just cut them up. We had to get down. You go, listen, I'm, I'm, I got to make this practical for you. I'm trying to preach Jesus like Jesus. I'm trying to make this as practical for you. But there are going to be some things 
that are going to be in your life. There are going to be some, there are going to be some bad roots. You're not going to be able to handle those bad roots standing up. You're going to have to get down on your knees, and you're going to have to plead to God. You're going to have to ask God for forgiveness. There are going to be some people in your life that are going to have issues of addiction. There are going to be sometimes you're going to be addicted to something, and it's going to require for you to get down on your knees. You're not going to be able to fight it pretty. You're going to have to get mud on your clothes. You're going to have to get down. And listen, I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody now. For some of your issues, you're dealing with all kind of gender confusion. You've got all kind of things going on and all types of bad behaviors and lust going on inside of your life, it's going to require for you to get down on your face before the Lord. And you're going to have to get in there with everything that you got. And you're going to have to pull that root out. And it's going to require for you to, to get down and you're going to have to get it. I love with that thing. And you're going to have to look at that thing. And you have to pull it with everything that you got. But it's going to require for you to get down on some of these things, guys, you're not going to be able to pull them out standing up. Some of these things, you, that your children have got to be so important to you. Your parents have got to be so important to you. Your life has got to be so important to you that you're willing to get down. I'm willing to get down on the ground for my parents. I'm willing to get down on the ground for my health. I'm willing to get down on the ground for my finances. I'm willing to get out of eye with my issues and allow for the Word of God to work miraculous things inside of my life. I'm willing to break generational holes, strongholds on my family by getting down on my knees, even if I have to get down on my face before the Lord. I'm making it practical for you now. I'm trying, I'm trying to make it practical for you. I'm trying to make it practical for you. You ain't going to leave here. And you, not, not because I'm doing everything I can to make this practical for you. Now, after, you get the, after you get the right tool out, after you get down on your knees and get to work, now, now it's time for you to get rid of it. You got to actually Cut this thing out. Get the whole root out of it. Get it away from you. Get it away. From, don't just throw it over in the, in the neighbor's backyard. You got to get this thing away from you. You got to get to this point. This is what Paul tells the Ephesian church, where you get rid of all bitterness. You can't be bitter no more. When people do stuff to you, you can't get angry and hold a grudge against them no more. You have to be able to forgive people on the surface. You got to be able to say, listen, because you're deep underneath the surface, you can forgive people on the surface. When you're not deep underneath the surface, you can't forgive people on the surface. It's time out for the weed control of bitterness. It's time out for holding grudges, for getting mad at people. For, oh, that person didn't speak to me today. I ain't going to speak to them no more. For, for, for holding grudges, for not speaking to people, for saying ugly things to people, for doing things out of bitterness. Paul says get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all rage. You got no business yelling and cussing and, and, and telling people off and doing all this crazy stuff. You're a Christian. You need to get down on your knees. If you're having trouble with anger, to the point that you just fly off and start cussing people out? That's not right. That's a bad route. You need to get down on your knees, lay down on your face, whatever it takes. Get the word of God out for that thing. It, it is, if you're spending up more money than you make, God didn't create for you to be that way. God created for you to be prosperous. That means that when you leave here, you're going to leave money two, three, four generations behind you. That's what God intended for you. He said that you're going to be the head and not the tail. That you're going to be above and not beneath. That you're going to be the lender and not borrowing everything. That everything you put your hands to, that God's going to bring out good stuff out of that. But, but you got to start by getting the bad, the bad stuff out. He says you got to get rid of this anger. You got you to get rid of, what you doing? You're too old. You've been, you've been a Christian too long. You're too old to be brawling and, and talking about you're going to get out the car and, and, and hurt somebody in traffic. You, you're grown. Your children in the car watching you act like this. It ain't right. You, you, listen, you got to get these rules out. You can't, you can't talk to the mama like, you can't talk to the dad like that. You can't yell at each other in front of these people. These, all this brawl and all this anger, all this rage, you got to get on the ground if you have to. You got to get the word of God. You got to get this stuff out of you. You can't, listen, stop gossiping. Stop putting your mouth on people. Stop slandering. Stop reposting stuff. That, that's against people that you don't like. Stop that. That is not the Christian way that we're supposed to live. Stop applauding folks who are doing the wrong thing. Stop putting down folks. Stop saying ugly and nasty things. I don't care who God takes it. Vengeance is the Lord's. 
It's not yours. It's not your post. It's not your likes. It's not your repost. You need to start paying attention. That's a, that's a, that's a root that needs to come out. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody on Facebook probably. That's a root that needs to come out. You need to get rid of that God. That's not supposed to be on the inside of you. He, he says, get rid of this, this slander along with, look what he says, everything that you do to try to get back at somebody. Anytime you try and hurt somebody and get back at them because they did this to you, that's a root. That's a, that's a bad root that's happening on the inside of you. It was gone for a season, but as soon as that jealousy kick in, as soon as you don't get your way, as soon as things are not right, that thing starts to grow. And some of these things, listen to me, some of us had that miracle grow on the inside of us. I'm talking about as soon as this thing pop up, it just sprout up, this, this, this bad root. Yeah. And this is what he says. He says, I want you to get my word. I, I, I want because it's strong enough, it's powerful enough, it's sharp enough to cut to the issue. Then, then I want you to get that issue out of you. L this, this is the next thing you got to do. You got to get to this place where, check this out, where you get a covering. See, see, here's the thing. If we had to just took up all the, uh, the mulch and laid down one of those weed coverings and kept it maintained without holes, Weeds could have never got back down. See, these seeds, these roots could have never got back down in there. And, and that's what you got to do. Not only do you need to get on your knees and pray, not only do you need to get into God's Word, not only do you need to get to this place where you get rid of everything, but once you do that, you need to get covered by God. Look what, look what David says. He says, he who dwells, this is the person that's covered by God, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Once you get this thing out of you and you get underneath God's shadow, you don't have to worry about what somebody said or what somebody did or what's going on in your life. You don't have to worry about when it's good and when it's bad and, and whether or not this thing going to pop up because God begins to cover you. He says, I will say to the, of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. He is my covering. My God in him, I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from any kind of bad root that you have inside of your life. All you got to do is, is get underneath him. All you got to do is get under his covering. He says he'll deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Look what he would do. He shall cover you with his feathers. I, I want you to see that image. I want you to see you. I want you you got to see yourself. I want you to see yourself. I want you to see yourself with God's word for your issue. I want you to see yourself on your knees praying God's word over your issue. At eye level, you pulling that issue up. I want to see you pulling this issue out of your life. I want to see you getting rid of this issue and then getting under the covering of God. He, he says, this is what I want to do. I will cover, he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You see what he does? Is this is what happens when, when you cover that area where you don't want the weeds. It becomes a shield and a buckler for that area. Nothing can penetrate that. As long as you keep that area covered, as long as you keep that, that weed control covering over it, as long as you keep the Lord over you and in your life, it doesn't matter what comes against you, what anybody says to you. God can cover you. He can be your refuge. He can be your shield and your buckler. And here's the last thing you need to do. Got to get this now. You need to get to this place where you start to plant good roots. You know, if you look at your lawn, the areas where you have the most weeds, the areas where you have the most issues are bare spots. Spots where you're not growing good grass are the areas of your life where there's a lot of opportunity for, uh, for, for weeds to come in, for for all these bad roots to come in. Because what happens is, in an area where there's not good grass and there's just bare grass, anything can take root. But when you fertilize your grass and when you keep your grass strong and you continue to plant the good stuff and, and, and don't allow for room for there to be any bad stuff, you get to this place where you begin to get rid, not only get rid of it, but you begin to keep these bad roots, root, roots out. And, and look, look what Paul tells the, Galatia, the, the church in Galatia. He says, do not be deceived. God, God, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap is what he's saying. He, you know, he's addressing the issue. He's saying this is not just about stuff happening around you sometimes. The bad stuff that's happening in your life is not just what mama them did or didn't do. The bad stuff that happened in your life is not just what they did to you in that past job or in that past relationship. The bad stuff that's happening in your life is not just something that happened from out there. But, but what he says is sometimes... 
we begin to plant the wrong things inside of our life. Sometimes we begin to return texts to the wrong person. Sometimes we begin to go to sites that we have no business going to, and then all of a sudden we get lured in and we get pulled in. Sometimes we allow for stuff that we heard on TV to become a part of our vernacular, and we start saying that stuff to people that we're in relationship with, and we start offending people, and we start bringing aggression into the relation. And what he's saying is sometimes we plant the bad seeds. And he says God's not going to be mocked. If you choose to go out and plant bad seeds, if you choose to go out and, and spend your money on the wrong way, if you choose to go out and spend time in the wrong place, if you choose to put something above God, you will reap, you're going you're gonna to reap every, every, bad root that you, every bad root you plant. He says, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. He says, when you plant bad seeds in your life, when you go out and you plant the wrong thing in your life, you're going to reap it. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get reaped. You can stay on your knees all you want to. You can, listen, you can read the Word of God all you want to. Jesus even said the Word of God is of no effect because of your traditions, because of the things that you do once you get up. <laughs> From, from praying and laying on your face and reading the Word, and then you get up and cuss somebody out. He says the Word of God is made of no effect in your life. Now, think about this now. Powerful, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, can cut through the marrow, can cut through the bone, can cut through the soul, can do all these things of no effect because you keep planting bad seeds in your life. Because you keep choosing to cuss somebody out over and over. No matter how many times you pull it out, you just plant it again. You just move the protection. You know, you put down God's covering. You get close to him for a season, you know, during that season. And then all of a sudden, when things get good, you, you just get away from the covering. You get from underneath the covering. You just open yourself up to all kind of nonsense. You plant stuff that you have no business planting. You watch stuff that you have no business watching. You say stuff that you have no business saying. It's a, I'm trying to make it as practical as I can. You can lay on your face. You can dig all you want. You can remove all you want. If after you remove, you come back and plant stuff that's not supposed to be there, you're going to have to suffer the consequences of what you plant. Now, this is a good thing. It's a good thing. Because we read it, read it a little bit further. He says, the consequence for the good stuff that you plant, you get to reap that too. He says, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. This is what he says. Then, then he begins to encourage you because, because, because I want you to hear this. What I'm asking you to do today, not easy. The conformed world that you live in, it, it's okay to cuss people out. It's okay to watch things on TV. It's okay to, to date, who, you know, date who you want to date, right? Do what you want to do. Have as much, do, take as much drugs you want to. Just don't get caught. You know, just don't. You know, drink all you want. Just don't have a DUI. It's, 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 it's all these conflicting messages. Do what you want. Have what's fun. Have much, whatever fun you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. Never telling you that every seed that you plant, you're going to have to account for every single one of them. And this is the encouragement. Uh, even as you're digging, even as you're praying, even as you're reading God's Word, you're going to all, just like all of us, you're going to come into a situation in which you think it's not working. And, and this is the promise. This is what God promises in his word. He says, and let us not grow weary planting the right roots. Let, let us not go weary in digging this up and throwing it away every time we find. Let us not get weary in doing the right thing. Let us not get re weary in making the right decision. Let us not get weary in living a life for Christ. Let us not get weary in planting the right roots. Let us not get weary in praying for God to move. Let us not get weary in reading his word. Let us not get weary in removing things out of our life that have no business in our life. Let us not get weary because in due time, you're going to get everything that you planted, all the good seeds that you planted in due time every one of those things is going to come it's going to come to you if you just don't lose heart i, I, I want to stop for a second i want to ask you a, a simple question what is god saying to you in this parable now not what he's saying about the person that you were with or the person that hurt you or the person that you see that's not doing it. What is God saying 
to you about his word, about spending time in his word? What is God saying to you about spending time on your face, on your knees in prayer? What is God saying to you about getting rid of, of these, these roots, these things that are not supposed to be inside of your life? What is God's word saying to you about getting covered? What is God's word saying to you about planting good seeds? This, th 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 I want you to make this as personal as you can. What is this parable that Jesus shows us? What is it saying to you? And I want you to imagine what your life would be like if you would act on what God is showing you right now. If you could get those roots out. If you can change that part about you, and you can. You can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's going to require you to get down. It's going to require you to spend some time in your word. It's going to require you to spend some time. You may have to leave a way around for some people who they constantly keep planting this bad stuff inside of your life, and sometimes you just take it from them and you plant it in your own life. So you may have to get away from some people, some bad roots, some people who are full of bad roots. You know, what, what, what Earl has in my yard, and his yard has proven to come over into my yard many times, that crabgrass and and the weeds. Some, sometimes you got to get away from some people. You got to get away from some situations. Sometimes you got to get away from some places. But I want you to imagine what your, how would your life be different if you can get rid of all that stuff? You know that stuff? Here's a good example. That stuff that you saw in your mama and your daddy? Oh, yeah, I hit somebody hard then, didn't it? That you always said you never wanted to see in you. The, the, I'm, I'm talking to somebody, the doubt, the fear, the anger, the way you handle situations, the way you handle money. You know what it's like to, to just, I'm talking to somebody, you, you've been eating bread sandwiches, Kool-Aid sandwiches, you've been, you been eating all kind of banana sandwiches. You know what it's like when somebody doesn't manage their resources right. You know what it's like when somebody's addicted. You know, you know what it's like when you have somebody that you depend on and they're addicted to something. And you know what it's like to, to have that addiction to come inside of your house, steal your VCR, steal your TV. You know what it's like. So I'm talking to somebody today. You know what it's like when somebody can't control themselves and they constantly keep going out and making bad decisions that you have to either forgive them for or get them out of. You know what it's like. And, and what I'm telling you today is think on that. And allow for God's word, allow for your prayer, allow for your effort to, to dig this stuff out, allow for the covering of God, allow for you planting the right thing to change your life. And just imagine, imagine what your marriage would be like if, you know, not forget about the other person. You just get your bad roots out. Imagine what parenting would be like. Forget about the kids. I know they don't get, they all on the internet, they do all this stuff, they Hey, parachute pants, they do all this. I get it. Imagine what the relationship would be right, like if you could just get your bad roots out. Don't worry, don't worry about them. You get your bad roots out, they'll, they'll, they'll get it. They'll, they're, they're getting out. They're getting bad roots from us, guys. I'm, I'm just hate to tell you. They're, they're getting the way they're seeing us dealing with each other. That's where they're getting the bad roots from. What, what, what is it going to be like in your family? At work. What, if you just apply what God is saying to you today, how does that change your work environment? Be, be, because this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to go deeper, and this is how we're going to do it. We, we, we're going to do it in this way right here. Now, I want you to get this in your spirit this week. When, when, when you remove the bad roots, you, you're able to bear good fruit. It, it's, it's that simple. I know, I know I added a couple extra words from it. But if you look at these yellow words, if you remove the bad roots, you will bear good fruit. If you can just get this bad stuff out of your life, these bad behaviors, these bad attitudes, all this stuff that you know, it, it just chokes out everything that's good that's happening inside of your life. If you can get rid of that stuff, God can bring into your life this good fruit. It's going to require you to go deeper. We cannot be shallow. We can't do weed control any longer. We've got to get to this place where we dig it out and get rid of it. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, uh, we, we thank you first and foremost for the parable that you gave us today, God, to show us that the things in our life, that, how they choke out your word, how they choke out the blessings, how they make us unfruitful, God. And so now we are praying. We, we see it. We can see it, God. Those of us who can hear have heard. Those of us who can see, we see it, God. And now we need your Holy Spirit. 
Your word says that your Holy Spirit gives us the ability to do the right thing when we're supposed to do it and, and not do the wrong thing when we're not supposed to do it. It's as simple as that. It's not us. It's not about us, God. It's not about what we can do in our own power. It's only your spirit, God. Paul says, the thing that I wanted to do, I, I, I couldn't do it. The thing I didn't want to do, I couldn't stop from doing it. But for Jesus Christ operating inside of my life, I'd always plant the wrong root. I'd always plant the wrong root. But because of Jesus... I have the ability to plant good roots in my life. I have the ability, because of God's Word, to remove the junk out of my life. I have the ability through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I don't have to worry about anything, but in everything, all I got to do is get down on my knees, on my face, and pray, and through supplication and thanksgiving, you'll give me a peace that will surpass all understanding in every situation of my life. I can get to this place where I can pull out every bad root inside of me, I can get under your covering, God. I can begin to plant good stuff. And, and, and God, you say in your word, if, as long as I don't get weary in trying to do this good thing, that you will give me that benefit. You, you promised that in your word of the, of the good fruit that I'm, I'm planting. And so, God, I pray over us now, God, let us not just be hearers of this word today, but allow your Holy Spirit to help us to become doers of this word today. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, a couple, couple of, uh, we're going to open the doors of the church. I know uh, some of you guys online, uh, it's a weird uh, analogy to use to say open the doors of the church. But it's no different than if you were here. Doors of the church are now being opened right where you are. If you do not know Christ as the head of your life, the first thing we want to do is we want to give you an opportunity to confess today that you're going to make him the head of your life. You're going to, you're going to come before him. You're going to allow for his word to, to get these issues out of your life. You're going to sit down. You're going to begin to pray. Make him the head of your life. You're going to go in and you're going to rip out this, the, all these bad roots that are inside of your life. You're going to get under a covering. You're going to begin to plant good fruit. And if that's you, all you have to do is click on the Join Us uh, uh, button there on the screen, or you can just put something inside the chat. Give, give us your name. Give us some contact information, email or something, so we can reach out to you. We, we want to disciple you. We want to spend time with you. We want to get you involved in some of our ministries. All of our ministries are still meeting virtually right now. We want to get you covered. We want to get you discipled. We want to get you baptized, to be honest with you, as soon as we, we possibly can, if that's you. Uh, if you're looking for a church, I know many of you are right now. You know, part of what I just told you is you've got to get covered. For some of us, you've been going through the same routine where you pull out God's Word, you get into a situation, you pull out God's Word, you do some digging, you do some removing, you do some praying, but you don't get covered. And listen to me, I want to be your pastor. I don't just want you to be online. I don't care where you are in this world, in the United States. I want to pastor you. I want to pray for you. I want to be there for you. But we want to cover you now, cover you right now. Uh, if you're in need of prayer, uh, there's a prayer button that you can click on as well. If you're on our site, I'm, I'm pretty sure by now Robert uh, or Shaki has put prayer information. We do a daily prayer call at 7 o'clock every morning. We do an a, a, a evening prayer call, I mean a, a midday prayer call at noon every day, Monday through Friday. On Tuesday nights, we get together on, on uh uh, on, on Zoom or whatever it's called. What is it called? Ring Central. And, and we do a prayer call, 630. We do prayer requests. We do praise reports. I mean, it is a really good time. And you can be a part of all that. You can be covered uh, by uplifting in all those different ways. And so all you do is click on that prayer link, and then we'll, we'll get prayer. Just tell us what it is you want to pray about. You don't have to leave your name if you don't want to. Just let us know. What, we just want to pray for you. We just want to help you out. And then finally, if you are member or not, if this message has done anything for you, consider giving. Consider sowing into this ministry because what we want to do is we want to get this. This is our mission. Our mission is to uplift, is to uplift Christ as high as we can so he can draw as many people to him as possible. 
in order for us to have this service today, it required for people to give. In order for us to have this online platform, these cameras, it required for people to give the electricity in here, the groundskeeping that I told you about, it requires people to give. And so if you are a member of Uplift, we're asking that you, that you be a tither. Um, if you're just giving an amount, go to a percentage. Make, make it personal with God. Don't just make it... Um, you know, about a, a, a number that you just arbitrarily grab from somewhere, probably some number that you used 20 years ago. Now, go to a percent giver. We, we need you during this time to begin to be, if you're not going to tithe, at least be a percent giver in this ministry. If you're just visiting with us, we're going to ask that you just, just drop a seed into this ministry. This is good ground. We're removing bad roots, but we need your good root of giving inside of our ministry in order for us to continue to go forward. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Amen.